complete a full two mean hypothesis test with the population standard deviation known. We're going to use the p-value approach. A sociologist is studying how communication methods have changed over the years due to technology. Specifically, the sociologist would like to compare time spent talking on a cell phone during two different years. Now y'all, when you see a problem this big, don't, don't stress. Just take it one line at a time and write down what you know. All right, in 2015, 200 people were sampled. The average time spent communicating on a cell phone was 166.94 minutes per day with a known standard deviation of 36.41 minutes per day. In 2018, another 200 people were sampled. During this year, the average time spent communicating on a cell phone was 176.46 minutes per day with a known standard deviation of 27.54 minutes per day. Is there sufficient evidence at alpha equals 0 0.01 to show that the average time spent communicating on a cell phone per day was less in 2015 compared to 2018? For this case, since we're comparing two means, we're going to use 2015 as the first sample and 2018 as the second sample. We're going to work through the test procedure and interpret the results of the hypothesis test. Let's review those steps. First, we're going to identify the null and alternative hypothesis. Then we're going to decide on the significance level. We'll compute the test statistic. We'll find the p-value. And using all of that information, we will interpret the results of the hypothesis test. Let's begin. Identifying the null and alternative hypothesis. Since we want to test if 2015, sample 1, was less than 2018, sample 2, we would use the less than symbol for the alternative hypothesis because remember the null hypothesis is always equality. So here we're going to say the mean of the first sample mu sub one equals the mean of the second sample mu sub two. So the null hypothesis always has the equal sign. As we mentioned, the alternative hypothesis is going to be less than 2015 mu sub one is going to be less than 2018 mu sub two. And that's how we write our null and alternative hypothesis. Because this is a left, or excuse me, a less than symbol, we are going to have a left tailed test. Just keep that in mind. We are given the significance level of alpha equals 0 0.01. So that's given. And now we're going to compute the test statistic. Now, when we're using the mean and two samples, because the standard deviation is known, we're going to use a Z test statistic, and we're going to use this formula given. Notice the sub ones go with 2015 because that is our first sample, and anything that is, has a little sub two, the X bar sub two, sigma sub two, N sub two, are those of our second sample, 2018. So we're going to use the following values from the given information. Remember at the beginning when I said write down what you have as you go through. It's going to make your life a lot easier if you have the pieces of data written down. They give you the sample mean from 2015, that'd be x bar sub 1. They give you the sample mean for 2018, x bar sub 2. They give you the sample or the, the population standard deviations as well as the sample size. Notice the sample size for both 2015 and 2018 are both 200. So n sub 1 equals n sub 2 because they both equal 200. Now we can use those values and substitute them into our given formula. So if you have the formula written down, you have the value that you need from your information, and you can substitute them in. It is very, very important that you follow the order of operations. When you plug these into your calculator, you want to make sure you're using parentheses so that you keep the order of operations in mind. Here we find our test statistic to be a negative 2.95. We now use that test statistic to find our p-value. So we can use um, the area under the normal curve to find our p-value. So because this is a left tail test, we're looking to the area to the left of the test statistic of negative 2.95. So I go to my table, I find the Z score, right, the standard normal table, and I find the, the value of negative 2.95. The area to the left of that test statistic is going to be 0 0.002. Thus, my p-value is given at 0 0.002. Now that I have my p-value, I can go ahead and interpret the results of this hypothesis test. Remembering, 
that if the p-value is less than your level of significance, you're going to reject the null hypothesis. So in this example, our p-value of 0 0.002 is less than our level of significance, which we know is 0 0.01. So since the p-value is less than the level of significance, the conclusion is to reject the null hypothesis. Interpreting that result, at the 1% significance level, the data provide strong evidence to show that the average time spent communicating on a cell phone per day was less in 2015 compared to 2018.